everyone, it's Chuck back again with another video. Today I have a special guest I'll introduce you to in a second, but the topic is cold storage, and so we want to let you know a little bit about what's going on and what we're working on in the area of refrigerants as it relates to cold storage. So I'm here today with Andrew Panzula, one of our engineers at Comoros. He's been working on uh, Option refrigerants and HFOs for, for a number of years, doing a lot of projects, but today I wanted to get Andrew here and have him uh, tell us a little bit about a cold storage project uh, that he's been working on for a few years. So Andrew, can you give us the background there? Sure. Uh, this was a cold storage facility that had global operations. And uh, this particular warehouse that we were working with was in the northeast part of the USA, kind of the greater New York City area. Um, it was a centralized refrigeration system that was designed and sized for R22 direct expansion. Uh, I believe it had three Gaia screw compressors um, and they were operating uh, the facility at both medium temperatures, so like plus 20 roughly, and then low temperature, so as low as like minus 20 F. Um, and that was pretty much, it was a pretty typical setup that you would see for a direct expansion R22 system. Okay, so this, uh, this end user facility, it sounds like they had a lot of R22 they were uh, trying to manage. So uh, what were some of the options they considered uh, before they uh, decided on a final solution? Yeah, the, the primary decision that had to be made for this facility and a lot of their facilities that were running on R22 were, um, do you either want to retrofit the equipment or do you want to replace the equipment with, a, with another refrigerant? Um, in this case, replacement would be replacing all the equipment with ammonia. Um, I mean, that is something this end user had experience doing. Um, I mean, ammonia was, it's, it's a very prevalent refrigerant in the cold storage world. But um, in this case, the equipment still had useful life on it. And the cost of replacing all the equipment with ammonia, as well as the reoccurring costs of managing ammonia were very high for this end user. So um, retrofitting this equipment was a viable option. Um, as far as refrigerants that we were looking at, uh, R449A or Option XP40 was our primary refrigerant. Um, we we liked that, that refrigerant because for a large cold storage warehouse capacity was a very, very important concern. So we knew based on modeling and doing assessments of the compressors that there wasn't going to be a capacity delta between R22 and 449A. So um, that was the path that we ended up going down. Okay, so after the decision to retrofit rather than replace was made, uh, uh, tell us a little of the details on the actual conversion process itself. Uh, what things had to be changed, what things didn't, uh, how a standard a, a changeover was it? Sure. The the process was very uh, similar to any R22 retrofit that you would do in the field. Um, I mean, the refrigerant was recovered, uh, all the, the oil was changed, the critical elastomeric seals were replaced. In this case, because they were screw compressors, um, the, the one critical elastomeric seal that absolutely needs to be looked at and replaced with care is the shaft seal on the compressor. Um, all the filter dryers were replaced. The oil coalescers were changed. Um, the, the, a vacuum was pulled. So they pulled down a vacuum for uh, many hours until they got a vacuum down to roughly about 500 microns. And then once they got a good deep vacuum, they charged the system up uh, with 449A and turned on the switch in the compressor and we were, we were moving from there. Good. It sounds a lot like the, uh, the eight easy steps to retrofit, but uh, on a, just a little bit bigger scale yeah. and a, a little more at stake uh, than a, a, re a residential uh, air conditioner, but uh, all the same basic steps followed. Mm -hmm. So it's been running now for a couple of years, all, all good? Yeah, it's been running for, uh, I'd say probably about roughly almost three years now, a little over three years. Um, and to date, there really haven't been any performance issues uh, with keeping the cold storage warehouse at temperature and the end user has now been able to extend the life of their uh, initial investment in their equipment. 
That's great. Uh, awesome. It sounds like uh, they made the right decision. So, uh, so what's going on in the future? Uh, more of this kind of work going on? Uh, I'm sure there's still a lot of R22 out there in the cold storage uh, side of the industry. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of R22 out there in cold storage, as we've learned and talked with end users, um, especially for end users that are looking at um, direct expansion R22 equipment. Um, retrofitting is a great option for extending the life of the equipment. There are some cases where equipment is at um, really the end of its useful life and replacement might be an option in those instances. But uh, overall, I think in the cold storage space, retrofit can be a great way to get yourself regulatory compliant, uh, keep your existing equipment running um, while getting a lower climate impact. Great. Well, well, thanks so much for your time, Andrew. And uh, if anyone out there uh, wants to get a, a hold of you and talk to you, I'm going to put the uh, the Tech to Tech uh, hotline number down in the comments of this video, and uh, they can reach out and talk to you or one of our other engineers and kind of get similar assistance for their, for their project. So again, thanks for uh, taking the time, and uh, we'll be talking to all of you soon. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the series so you don't miss any of our uh, refrigerant updates. Thanks. Great. Thank you.